Good morning and welcome to our, our training session. Today we're going to be talking about a, a new product accessory we're going to be offering, which are branch fuse panels. All right, so for this morning's session, we're going to take a look at why we're offering these products in general. We'll look at some of the specifications, we'll take a look at the model number, and then I'll give you some examples of how to size one of these branch fuse panels. So for starters, this is a picture I collected from, uh, from the field, and this is showing a whole group of modified metal heaters installed in a single tank. I can see a total of eight heaters installed, when in fact there's actually spots for four more. So this one tank is going to have 12 immersion heaters installed, and for the electrician who's doing the wiring, that means he has to manage 12 conduits, 12 sets of wires. Here's a picture illustrating a new tank installation, and we're showing nine metal heaters installed in a single tank. Again, that's how much heat is required to heat up the process bath, but the electrician who does the wiring is going to have to be able to manage nine conduits and nine sets of power wires. Now here's another picture I collected, and this shows a customer in the field who has what appears to be four heaters installed in a single tank. And you can see in the center of the picture the control box is right there, and all four conduits are going to the control box. Now I want to point out to you that this is actually incorrect wiring, and I'll, I'll tell you why. You see, inside of our temperature control boxes are the large switching contactors. These are responsible for turning the heaters off and on. But I'll point out that the connectors on these switching contactors are only rated to hold two conductors per position. That means your customer can really only connect a maximum of two heaters to one of these contactors or three heaters if they're wired, three single phase heaters that are wired in Delta. Any more than that and they have to provide some other means of connecting all these conductors together to make it work. Now this is not new information. This is a figure from our electric heater installation instructions and this figure shows right here that we specify when necessary that the customer has to provide a junction box with branch circuit protection. That's nothing we would have provided in the past. That's something the customer is responsible for. What that means is when the electrician is doing the integration of the heaters and the controllers if he's hooking up 9 or 12 heaters in a single tank, he then has to source out or build his own junction box with branch circuit protection. But not anymore. What we're going to start offering today is our new branch fuse box. So what I'm going to do is take you under the hood, so to speak, and look inside. So here's an internal view of one of these boxes. And what you're going to see is this top portion, that's the power distribution block. That terminal right there is going to send wires back to the switching contactor and on the lower half it's branching off to anywhere from two to seven or eight different sets of power branches. So that power distribution block is designed for this exact purpose. On the bottom half we've got some power branches. This is fusing and what we're going to do is we're going to set this up so that we have one power branch per heater. That's the appropriate amount of branches we should have. If you've got nine heaters in a tank, you have to have nine branches. Also, this is showing three heaters per branch, or three, three fuses per branch. That means this is going to be for a three-phase load. And the bottom half of those fuse holders you see there will only have one heater wire per connection and that's well within normal code requirements. Now what's harder to see is on the left and right sides of this particular panel we actually have terminal blocks for the hookup of the high temperature protectors from the heaters. So they're on the sides, they're just not easy to see because of the layout of this particular box. Those terminal blocks are going to be pre-wired in series. 
such that if you're hooking up multiple heaters and you hook your protectors up to those terminals, it's going to be one wire per terminal. It's already going to be wired in series. Then the customer is going to take the end terminals and go back to the temperature control box, the terminals four and five, where we have our hookup for the protector terminals on the control circuit itself. Now on the inside cover of the box we have something very important for the electrician. These are the labels identifying the sizes of wire he should be using and how tight the connections need to be. So that's going to be on every one of these control boxes. Each box is also going to come with a schematic which will show the electrician where to connect their wires. This here is a view of the model number format for these new branch circuit boxes. So the first thing we're going to call out is the series type. We're going to use the, the phrase BF for branch fusing, followed by the phase. Is this single phase or is this three phase? After that, we're going to identify the number of branches. Here on the table, we're showing one through four. In reality, this could be one through eight. And that's how many heaters we have. Also, we're going to identify if this is going to be fusing or a miniature circuit breaker in the future. After that, we're going to call out the sizes of the fuses for each branch. So you're going to have anywhere from one to eight sets of numbers following, and that's just calling out the size of the breaker or the size of the fusing. And then at the very end, and this is important, whether or not the branches are going to be wired in parallel or in delta or in Y. And that's something we're going to be doing inside of our box. All we need to do is first calculate the current draw of the electric heaters. We normally quote the same heater for each, for each tank so that it's a multiple of one model. Well, calculate its current draw. How much current does the heater, does one heater draw? Step two, we're going to add ourselves a 25% safety factor and that's going to point out to us what size fuse or mini circuit breaker we're going to need. And then lastly, we're going to count the number of heaters and that's how many branches we're going to have. So I've got a couple examples worked out to illustrate the point. Here's the first example. So we're going to be wiring four each of this metal heater model and that's a 6,000 watt 480 volt heater that is single phase. Calculating its current draw, a 6,000 watt 480 volt heater draws 12 and a half amps. Very good, that's one heater's worth. Add a 25% safety factor, that's 15.6 amps. The appropriate fuse size is the next size up, which is going to be a 20 amp fuse. At the bottom, we have our model number. It's a branch fuse single phase, dash four branches, fuses, and then the numbers 20 are the fuse sizes, and then the P means the four branches are to be wired in parallel. And that's our model number. Here's a second example featuring three of our Teflon covered heaters, and these heaters are 18,000 watts, 380 volts, three phase. So to calculate your current draw, an 18,000 watt heater rated for 380 volts, three phase power, is going to draw 27.4 amps nominally. Add yourself a 25% safety factor, and our result is 34.2. Well, that means the next fuse size up is 35. So that's the size fusing we're going to need. And then your model number at the bottom, branch fusing, three phase, dash, three branches with fusing, and then the 35 numbers indicate the size of the fusing. And then P for parallel wiring again. So in summary, <clears throat> branch power fusing has always, always been required by the National Electric Code, especially when the load of the electrical appliance exceeds 48 amps. Our electric heaters, when we're dealing with larger tanks, are always well above 48 amps of current draw. This is nothing new. However, in the past, this was not provided by us. Now we're able to offer this as an accessory for our electric heaters and our temperature controllers. And because our shop is a UL listed panel shop, these fuse boxes are going to have the UL listing as well, which is an advantage for some customers. This is not a homemade product. This is a UL listed, UL rated device. 
And the sizing of these devices is based upon the number of branches, the size of the fuses, and ultimately how they're to be wired.